The system is failing. We're going to have more homelessness, more unemployment, and the government has to print more money. It's a command and control economy where the government tells you everything. I just don't trust our government. You know, and they're going to have to start printing pretty quickly. And the more they print, the less value purchasing power the dollar has, or the loony, or the yen, or the peso. People are talking about inflation. I think we're in depression right now. And we're going to be a biggest depression in world history. In the 1970s, that's when the world was changing. The biggest bust in the history of the world is coming up. It's pensions. They trusted the government. They trusted their pension would be there, and it's going to go bust. And that's us. We get crushed. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the bearable bull here. And I got this aggressively average content for you today. As off the heels of my previous video, where Jungle Inc. describes his thesis for why September to potentially November is the most likely time for a potential settlement of this SEC case, we have Jeremy Hogan here stating circle September 19th as an important date because we get to see most of the cards the parties are holding. Ripple versus the SEC. The end game is getting more exciting as the parties have filed a joint proposal to govern sealing issues related to the upcoming summary judgment motions to be filed in this case. Guys, you need to be extremely excited for the eventual wrapping up of this case because once we have clarity and once this lawsuit is under our belt, the price, in my opinion, will fly. That being said though guys, we have a lot to discuss. First and foremost, I want to remind all of you of the macro, as it does look disgusting, but I do believe risk assets like crypto are going to fly, specifically our altcoins. Ladies and gentlemen, my original hypothesis for the crypto market was that we were going to get an altcoin season about eight months ago. However, clearly, I was wrong. Clearly, we've seen eight months of downward price action, but now would be a powerful time to actually see that happen. Bitcoin right now is not where your attention should be. It should be on the ETH merge. It should be on the end of this XRP case, the launch of the Flare Network, ADA Cardano's having a powerful update as well, and the rest of the altcoins could potentially fly. We've seen that the Bitcoin dominance has fallen below support, and typically when Bitcoin dominance falls, altcoins rise. People aren't expecting it. And that's why I'm personally all in with my cash position, as I let all of you know. Some additional positive momentum and positive news and a positive perspective you should all hear is this one from Rao Paul, as he continues to let you all know what he sees coming. Please take a listen to this brief clip. Update for me. I'd like to give you something weekly just to give you an idea of what's going on. So markets are really complicated right now. We've got some extreme things going on. The dollar is going up very fast, and that's a wrecking ball for the global economy as all of these economies start to see their currencies weaken. The yen, which is one of the largest currencies in the world, has been in free fall. So these are kind of scary times, but all of these countries that are having a weaker dollar are all exporters. So therefore, the goods that they export get cheaper. This is a deflationary pressure. Remember, I've been telling you for many weeks now that the oil market's going to break lower. Today, it finally broke lower. So we're now down at about $81 or so. I still think it comes to 60, maybe even lower than that. So we're going to see a lot of this inflation fears coming off. Most commodities have come off. Housing prices have coming off. Rents will eventually come off and we'll start to see unemployment rise. So we're getting the setup where the macro change is coming. That change is when the Fed stop fighting the previous war, which is inflation. Inflation is evaporating super fast, as is global economic growth. Last shoe to drop is the bond market. We need to start to see yields falling as they start pricing in the fact that inflation's gone and growth is gone as well. Part of this is driven by the technicalities of quantitative tightening. That's a story for another day. Meanwhile, it's looking like it's all about to play out and risk assets should start to do very well soon. Now, I hope that clip brings a little bit of positivity to all of you as i understand we've gone through some hard times recently 
all these news outlets are saying recession, recession, recession. And while we are in a recession, that does not mean we cannot retrace towards the upwards direction. Secure capital. Take profits. And then reposition our portfolios for what's to come. Ladies and gentlemen, for more clips like that, please follow me on Instagram down in the description below as you're missing a lot of content if you're not following me on there. Now, while we keep that in mind, we also need to understand that Watcher Guru stated that a Ripple senior advisor says there will be a central bank digital currency announcement in the coming weeks. And this is all while we've been seeing the news about SWIFT. Ladies and gentlemen, Russia decided they're trying to legalize cross-border payments for crypto. That is not a coincidence. And from Wall Street Silver, we also have that Russia's top banks are switching away from SWIFT and are now using an equivalent Chinese system called CIPS. The EU and US sanctions are pushing Russia into the Chinese financial ecosystem, where the 80 trillion and Russian commodity reserves will be traded and supplied via Asia. And guys, we also need to see this from the crypto lark, stating that China has announced they will start using both rubles and yuan to pay for Russian gas. No more dollars. The days of the petrodollar are numbered. We also need to remember that Saudi Arabia is looking for sales of oil in Chinese yuan as well. Guys, if there's something you guys forgot, it's probably that Saudi Arabia is the largest exporter of oil on the planet. In 1971, when Richard Nixon took the dollar off the gold standard, we went into the petrodollar system. And if you guys do remember, Saudi Arabia in 2020 was the president of the G20 nations. And trust me when I say, there's a very high potential that a lot of backroom deals were made while Saudi Arabia was president. Now guys, something you also need to understand is, while well, all this happens behind the scenes, Saudi Arabia did announce that they're pushing towards a digital economy and looking to regulate a global stable coin. I do not know what that is, but the digitalization of this economy, the tokenization of this economy is here. We're not going to wait another decade. We are on the precipice of regulatory clarity and adoption. And you better not forget that. Remember at the same time, the Biden executive order on digital assets is going to be put out. As U.S. agencies reported back to the White House September 5th. We also saw an order discussing digital assets and proof of work. They don't speak favorably about proof of work. That is why ETH switching to proof of stake is important. And that is why eco-friendly cryptos like XRP, HBAR, and others are going to thrive. But guys, something that got sneaked in that some of us weren't paying attention to was an executive order about accelerating CBDCs by Joe Biden a couple months ago. And Robert Kiyosaki, as well as Jim Rickards, discussed this openly on their podcast. And I want all of you to take a quick listen. As I believe, the flip of the switch moment is coming. Fed now, Swift, ISO, the end of this case, this executive order, Flare Networks, too many things are aligning for bullish catalysts for our digital assets. You have to remember, because you cannot forget. Please take a listen. Your concern on Executive Order 14067, which was just signed in as with Biden and company only a few months ago. What What is the, your concern 14067? Yeah, it has, it has a number of parts. And uh, the thing with, uh, uh, well, executive orders, or for that matter, legislation, I, I could say you have to read the fine print, and you do, but you have to actually consider the hidden agendas. Like, well, what, you know, I, I can read it. Anyone can read it. It's a public document. But, but what's behind it and where are they going with it? And that's really where the urgency comes in. And uh, it's basically an order that uh, accelerates the U.S. movement towards a central bank digital currency, so-called CBDC, um, 
these are happening all over the world. Uh, Beijing already has one. They're past the prototype stage. They kind of rolled that out during the Winter Olympics um, you know, last uh, February. Um, I believe it or not, the Bahamas has a digital currency. There are a few other countries that have already gone in that direction. Europe is, uh, the, the European Central Bank is very far along. The U.S. and the Federal Reserve, because they, they print the currency, um, they were, uh, they understood the importance of it. They were watching it, but they were kind of taking their time, like, hey, we're the biggest payment currency, biggest reserve currency in the world, which the dollar is, and we don't want to race into something if it's not thought out. And they were doing a kind of joint venture, uh, R&D program with uh, MIT. Okay, and they've got some experts there, so that, that seems to make sense. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, now that is getting spicy now, isn't it? MIT. Remember, Gary Gunsler taught crypto courses in MIT. Also understand, the rollout of CBDCs internationally have been hap- happening. China, the Bahamas, and the sand dollar. This has been in the works, and the U.S. has been planning behind the scenes to get it to work. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there's been a lot of contention over the FedNow program. A lot of people are like, oh, it's not going to use XRP. And while initially that is correct, they are partnered with Volante, Temenos, Vinastra, major Ripple partners down the road. What FedNow is going to signal is the adoption of a digital system and eventually, at some point, due to the fact that we're in a digital system, XRP's interoperability is going to come into play. Here we have Kristen Smith discussing the deadline for Biden's executive order on crypto and how the process took place. And one of the major things that they discussed were the amounts of energy that the U.S. was using with mining. They highlighted how it is incentivizing the shift to renewables. However, proof of work takes up too much energy. Efficiency and inclusion, that's synonymous with XRP and Stellar's mission statement. Banking the unbanked and giving people power to be able to be financially independent. Guys, keep all of that in your minds as regulation is coming. Not only is it coming, it's right at our doorstep. Coindesk had Gary Gensler on, stating many cryptos don't just resemble securities. They are. That being the case, he adds, service providers, including crypto exchanges, have an obligation to come in and register with the SEC. Guys, what is so important is that Gary Gunsler and the SEC have purposefully been very vague when it comes to the rules, the sandbox, the guidelines of the crypto market. And that's because they wanted absolute power. However, I believe because of this vagueness, they're going to lose some power to the CFTC. Some cryptos are commodities like Bitcoin, Ether, and eventually I believe XRP and others but others are security tokens. He's not entirely wrong. A lot of rules have been broken within the crypto market, but we just need some clarity and guidelines, and we are about to get them. Now guys, something very brief I'm going to pivot your attention to is how Polymath, a security token crypto exchange, has absolutely skyrocketed since yesterday going from 18 to 44 cents i've told all of you that this is one of my bigger holdings as this is my big crypto exchange play my initial entry point was at 8 cents and currently at 30 cents i believe down the road this will be a steal maybe wait for prices to cool down because the price is high relative to yesterday but keep this bad boy on your radar as once regulations and security tokens and laws are in place, this one is going to fly. Also note David Schwartz does own Polymath as well. Now guys, with all of that being said, with summary judgment coming in this XRP case, with all cards being on the table, with Swift, ISO, FedNow, 
plenty of other things happening at, at the same time, including China, Russia joining hands to avoid U.S. sanctions. Oh, baby, things are getting spicy. Do not overlook the Russia-Ukraine situation. Do not overlook European energy prices. All of this is going to lead to the inevitable financial currency reset. And to build on the hypothesis that I do believe an altcoin season and a crypto bull run is in the cards after the downwards price action we've experienced. This is from Game of Trades, showing that this is just the dynamic you want to see for a sustained uptrend. With the current pullback in the S&P 500, smart money confidence is rising higher, while dumb money confidence is trending lower. At the same time, from Captain Toblerone, stocks and cryptos are in a secular bull run that started in, 20, in 2009. Most likely they still have another bullish impulse before entering a long bear market, which is what I believe is coming. Guys, I do believe the most devastating financial crisis is going to come. I just think one more uptrend is in the cards first. Here's a quick thread on macros to support this bullish bias. First, long-term bond yields made a lower high and appear to have completed a B wave and are now ready to dump a long B C wave. Bond yields falling is good for risk assets. Next, the DXY has been showing multiple bearish divergences on high time frame charts and appears to have topped. The DXY was too damn high. And I believe we're about to get a weaker dollar soon. On lower time frames, it is in a rising wedge and got rejected after a fake out above the upper line. It's likely to start dumping. And the DXY dumping is full risk on. US oil got rejected from $98 and is now struggling below $90. It appears to be in a downtrend along the BC wave. Oil going down is very good for the inflation to keep falling, which in turn could force the Fed for lower rate hikes or consider a potential pause going forward, which I do believe is going to happen. Next, Atlanta Fed CPI now cast has been showcasing continuous Falling quarter over quarter CPI since June 2022, as shown by a red line in this graph. Lower CPI print is expected September 13th. This recent strong GDP growth data indicates the U.S. economy is not in a recession at the moment. Even though I think it is, this data isn't showing that. As per Atlanta Fed's annual real GDP growth estimate is now 2.6%, revides up from 1.6%. This is bullish and completely rules out the possibility of a stock market crash similar to 2008 at this specific moment in time. But I think it will come at some point down the road. The U.S. unemployment has been coming down since this health crisis peak in 2020. Unlike 2008-09 when unemployment was rising, the latest uptick in unemployment data indicates that the economy is slowing down and could force the Fed to consider lowering rate hikes. U.S. stocks bottomed in June 2022 and have been rising with a 618 pullback. The 50 and 100 MA are about to make a golden cross and also a potential inverse head and shoulders is forming. Both are bullish and can take this higher. Finally, Pi cycle bottom flash for Bitcoin in July 2022. Crypto has been in a correction for nearly a year and a half, thus making it a long correction period. Bitcoin daily chart is showing a potential golden cross. This is bullish and could result in a final impulse wave. Ladies and gentlemen, I 100% agree. I think positive price action is in the cards. As I continue to see retail investors faltering, having low energy and a terrible emotional state, it makes people like me and all of you savages that watch my video every single day ready to take advantage. Keep your eyes on the prize.
as we're about to get it. Our XRP flip of the switch moment is arriving. And something interesting that I thought I'd share with all of you is the fact that Rosie Rios just went to visit the Vatican and Pope Francis just a couple days ago. Now typically, I wouldn't think anything of this, but we know Rosie Rios has her name on all the damn US money. And at the same time, Pope Francis instructed the Vatican to move all funds to the Vatican Bank by September 30th. Guys, when I saw this news, personally I didn't think anything of it. But then when I saw Rosie Rios visiting the Vatican as well, it made me raise an eyebrow. I'm not saying anything is happening. I'm not putting my tinfoil hat on. I just thought it was interesting. Keep all of this information in your minds. We are going to cross the finish line. Yesterday was a powerful day with the passing of Queen Elizabeth as that was a powerful day for the UK. There's definitely an energy shift happening in the air and I know all of you are looking directly at it. Ladies and gentlemen, our flip of the switch moment is coming. It's fast approaching and I'll continue to tell you this. Every act of procrastination is an act of self-hatred. And if you procrastinate in the crypto space, it could cost you a life-changing opportunity. Keep that in mind, guys. Act now. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the bearable bull here. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. Now I'll be back tomorrow with another video.